Hello and welcome to a Business Minute with Lily Lopez presented by the South Florida Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. I'm here with Vice Chancellor Ariel Armini. And I always have to look at the book because he has such a nice name, Ariel Armini, AA. And he came all the way from Pittsburgh just to be with us. He's part of the of Pittsburgh um, University. And uh, he's going to be on our panel today, the panel discussion. And we're so excited because he's going to be talking about Miami being an emerging global city together with Singapore and Dubai. So for us, it's a big thing. And I remember when I talked to him, uh, we had a conference call. I was not aware, our members are not aware, and this is a big thing, guys. Miami, an emerging global city, this is huge. So thank you so much, Professor Armini, for being here today with us. And tell me, how did this all st started? Uh, you with the uh, other Professor Portes and came to the conclusion, where you, the studies that you made that you came to the conclusion that Miami is an emerging global city. Well, we <laughs> were looking at Miami first and then looking around the world and I identified a number of cities that uh, share some characteristics, but particularly there were three cities, three cities, Miami, Dubai, and Singapore, that had similar elements that were mm -hmm. really, really interesting. These cities had emerged from a peripheral insignificant position in right. the world economy <laughs> to become these global hubs. Global hubs in right. banking and finance, mm -hmm. in trade and transportation, real estate and construction, right. and the arts, culture, of and taxi. sports. Exactly. And in addition to that, these places were touristic attractions. And so yes. combining these elements really allowed them to jump to exactly. a new position exactly. in the global economy. And I remember uh, as, a, as a little girl just being in downtown Miami and thinking that this was an important city because I was tiny and you know my mother said no next to Havana. Havana was such a big city. Of course it's destroyed now because of communism but there was nothing. I think it's a courthouse and a few three or four buildings and now this, the, the construction is non-stop. Brickle, downtown, design district, you have Midtown, and it is Overtown, all of that is just full of buildings. Look at the, <laughs> the skyline. Plus Miami Beach too, but just the skyline is just so beautiful just to go down I-95 South and to see what Miami has become. But what's interesting is that you may be in Dubai or Singapore and sometimes you think you're in Miami. In Miami? Really? Oh, yes. oh wow, okay, yes. I didn't know yes. that. And so, so this is a very, very interesting because this didn't happen by chance. There was a vision behind this. That is the Several Cuban, components, right? Yes, together. the Cubans who uh -huh. came here, many of them bankers, right. they thought geography is so important. It plays an important role, absolutely. And but geography by itself doesn't do much. And so how do we turn this place into a global hub? So they looked south right. and they said, we have a number of things to offer. Not only ease of transportation and you know the right. location, but the American property laws that will safeguard investments. Exactly. The possibility to attract banks right. so that people, first wealthy individuals and then middle classes from Latin America could find a place to park their money. And then when that started to go, mm -hmm. you had construction. Exactly. And real estate. And real estate. And Miami. And hospitality. Exactly. Uh -huh. And so you start combining the fact that you have money that you want to invest in a safe place. At the same time, that is a tourist destination. So right. you can enjoy it. You can shop. And also you can rent your condo. Of and course. So you have the combination of these And we elements. have the port, which is the largest cruise, uh, um, cruise port in, in, in the world. So you have the Miami passengers. Airport, right. the port, and you, Brickell, Brickell. has the second largest concentration banks, of financial, financial institutions. institutions and banks That's correct. after New York on the East Coast. Oh, I didn't know that. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's huge for us. Yeah, it's huge. And why other cities, why do other cities don't become emerging global cities? Because they don't have the will to do it. They don't have the leadership. the leadership. And this is something that these three cities, Dubai, Singapore, and Miami, shared. These were different types of leaders, uh -huh. but they all share the idea that they saw an opportunity and they 
place a vision and the resources behind that the, idea. Yes. That is, it's possible yes. with certain conditions to build this kind of global hub. And so well, what, something that is very important is that Miami needs to be thinking about the future. About the future. Because there is continuous competition. competition. Other cities want to become want to be the Miamis. Or, of course they do, of course. Uh, so you need to be reinventing yourself. You need to be thinking about new opportunities all the time. And you had mentioned that the global cities that exist now, which I didn't know, and I thank you for teaching me, were London, New York, and Tokyo. Yes. And do they keep that status, or is there a possibility that you could lose that status? Well, so <laughs> so far, particularly New York and London, have kept have their kept status. Okay. Okay. And what's interesting about the concept of emerging global cities is that it describes the real world. Miami is not New York. Of course. But it's aspirational. And it's beautiful. You can dream. <laughs> dream. Yes, you yes, can dream about this. It continues, it's about continuous reinvention. It's about continuous movement. And, and others yes. see this city as a model. And it has the Hispanic component. So nice that New York City is very nice, but there's a lot of homelessness. There's a lot of... Well, one, of, one, right. one of the very important yeah. things that and was exactly that was central in building Miami was the possibility that you could come here and do business, do business exactly. in your own language, in your own language, in your own culture. That makes such a difference. That makes a that, huge difference. And it allows people to prosper. Absolutely. To prosper. And that is the difference between us and New York. Absolutely. In New York, the Hispanic community has not been as entrepreneur or maybe... I don't know how, how to describe it, and it's not a criticism, but Miami, we have so many people with that entrepreneurial spirit that have created so many companies, and there's so many jobs, so many opportunities, and I guess that's why we are an emerging global city. <laughs> Thank you so much, Professor, for being here with me today on A Business Made with Lily Lopez, and I'm looking forward to hearing you on the panel discussion today at Viva Miami, and we'll see you all next week at the same time. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of A Business Minute with Lily Lopez.